years after the fact, Jerry Tarkanian still smiles. Look how we're crazy. People to this day talk about it as the greatest moment maybe ever in this town. Tark the Shark was the coach of the University of Nevada at Las Vegas Running Rebels, one of the most controversial teams in sports history. I would trade the character of our kids with anybody in the country, including the Ivy League. The type of young black males we had on our team was real boastful. It was real bold to take a different type of coach to coach the team that we had. Coach K at Duke can't coach our team. In yard, number 15, Greg Anthony. If he was a fighter, he'd be a champion. He hit it you five times before you get your hand up. In yard, number 12, Anderson Hunt. He could shoot the ball. He had double and seven foot. Incredible. Get forward, number 32, Stacey Altman. Plastic man. The plastic man. Best defensive player in the world at that time. In the world. Along with power forward Moses Scurry and center David Butler, all five starters returned in the fall of 1989 for a team that reached the Elite Eight the season before. We knew we were going to be really good. And then we added Larry Johnson to that. Once LJ got there, that was it. That was a missing piece to the puzzle. People didn't love me. I was a trash talker. I was arrogant. It was a swagger of babies. Larry brought a lot of swagger with him, David and Moses, a lot of personality, a lot of intimidation. People thought they were crazy. You know, out on the floor, I thought they were crazy when I first met him. He had Tark chopping on the towel. He was considered everything from a crook to a cartoon character, depending on what type of mentality you had. The towel eventually was a habit. It was his safety blanket. So it became one of his things that he always had. It's one fold, two fold, three fold, and then in half. It's plain tap water on top. And his job is to test bite the opposite end and make sure it has enough moisture in it. Hello! They're awesome, baby! They're awesome! The run in reps oozed charisma and attracted fans across the country, as well as the attention of the NCAA. In the nine months prior to the 1990 NCAA tournament, Investigators visited UNLV 11 times. Ten players were suspended over the course of that season, most often for unpaid hotel incidentals and telephone calls. It was just assumed that we were all, you know, thugs and uh, incompetent and ignorant and uneducated. It gave us some focus and some adrenaline, and there was some anger as well. I said, the last thing that situation wants us is to win. We can fold with that or else we can kick everybody's butt. We had that mentality of us against the world. The more and more we could feed into that mentality, the more and more it was better for us. The run in Reds, 10 and 3 in mid-January, found another rallying point in a game against Fresno State. I'm going down a lane for a layup and I get my legs taken out. I broke my jaw in two places and my chin and cracked up all my teeth. He got wired up, the coaches called us, said he's going to have, have to wear a wire for a few months. And next practice, I look up, Greg's in there shooting. I thought he was going to be out at least a week or two. He didn't miss a game. That was incredible. That showed everybody that this is what we got to do. UNLV entered the NCAA tournament with a 29-5 record and was the number one seed in the West region. They routed Loyola Marymount in the regional final then handled Georgia Tech and Kenny Anderson in the Final Four, advancing to the national championship game versus Duke. You're saying it's a good versus the bad. I said, that really upsets me. I said, because I've met some of the Duke kids, and I don't think they're bad kids at all. And we began. We told our team, too, that for us to win the national championship, we can't have a close game. We have a close game. We're, we're not going to get any call. Everything's going to go against us. The run in reps led by a dozen at the break. Anderson Hunt scored 12 points in an 18 nothing run as UNLV pulled away in the second half. UNLV cruised to a 103-73 win, the largest margin of victory ever in a title game. It happened so fast that you just didn't realize that what the score was in the game. And at that moment, I was like, wow, we just won. It was showtime. 
As you can see, I was jumping around. I was, <laughs> I was at Disneyland before the game was over. <laughs> it was crazy. A year later, UNLV was favored to repeat. They started 34-0, but lost their bid for history, falling to Duke in the national semifinals. Two months later, the Las Vegas Review Journal ran a page one photograph that showed Anderson Hunt, David Butler, and Moses Scurry drinking beer in a hot tub with Richard the Fixer Perry, who served a prison sentence seven years earlier for his role in the Boston College basketball point shaving scandal. And he coached Moses Curry in AAU basketball. He became friends with Moses again. And uh, Moses said all he was doing was trying to help us. And uh, I, I don't know when that hot tub photo was taken. The hot tub photo? Yeah, well, how tough was that? I'd rather not speak on it. I'd rather not speak on it. But it hurt me because they said that we was throwing games. And it hurt because he never asked, he never once ever mentioned that to us, ever. You know, and that's the sad thing about it. There was a federal investigation into Perry's relationship with the players, but no evidence of point shaving emerged. We went five years with that kind of intensive investigation, and when they finished, they didn't have a major violation against them. Not one major violation. Still, Tarkanian and UNLV agreed to a compromise with the NCAA, accepting a ban from the 1992 tournament. Months later, Tarkanian announced that he would resign after that season, and ultimately, UNLV was placed on three years probation. For nearly two decades, Tarkanian's players kept their distance from the program they put on the map. And then, in November, the school bridged the void, hosting a 20-year reunion. Make no mistakes, we loved you and Elvin. We loved the program. We did not like the way we was treated at the end and the way they treated Coach Tarkanian and their coaching staff. There was so much to to try to bring down uh, what he had worked so hard to build, and, you know, it's unfortunate. Why was this team so misunderstood? I don't think it was misunderstood. I don't think our team was misunderstood. We were what we were. I don't think it was misunderstood. Greg Garber, ESPN.com. Jerry Tarakanian, the coach of that singular team, is 79 years of age now. He still lives in Vegas. And on the first day of the NCAA tournament, he made a personal...